Friday night in the cavern. Welcome everybody. Week 9. Good grief. How did that happen? Uh, just before we start tonight, I just want to just... Uh, I lost a really good friend uh, 12 years ago, 2009. Uh, about, the end of, about the end of April. Uh, Joe Kilner McKenzie. This is his tankard that was given to me by his friends. I just want to drink a wee toast to my friend. Uh, Joe, never forget your brother. Cheers, Slancha. So, tonight, Ryan Stewart, a uh, good friend of mine, I've met him, met him in the flesh for the first time at the first gathering uh, in 2017. And my first experience of him was, he had, I was looking for all the, the Denny Stone lifters, you know, he was on Gordon Denny's website. And I wanted to invite them along to the first, uh, to the first gathering. <clears throat> so I was chatting to, to Ryan about his lift. And he said he'd just done a whole weekend's worth of Highland Games. I think he'd done about three Highland Games in a row. And he'd just finished uh, competing that day. And he thought, I'll just have a go at the Denny's. He was that a boy. So he did that after doing three. <laughs> you know, so that, that's, that's some kind of feat in itself. Uh, but Ryan, is, he, was a, he was a pro Highland Games uh, thrower for about eight years. When he was, he's lifted 47 historic stones worldwide. That's something. Uh, he is full sturker, which we will explain later. He is full god drang. I have no idea what that means. I tried to look it up. I couldn't find it. So Ryan can explain that. He's lifted the Denny's obviously a few times. He did a hell of a lift at, at the first gathering. Uh, he's co-owner in Black Flag uh, Strength and Fitness, which I'm wearing the t-shirt tonight, Ryan. Uh, the leg stain. Uh, I'm not going to say too much about this, but th this, th this for me is this is a thing that's probably going to be one of the highlights of the conversation for me tonight. It is so. I'm actually really looking forward to that. And I've just got a message in there from a girl uh, about an Irish stone I've been researching for ages. So more on that later. Uh, Swedish stones rediscovered in 2019, and I think for for Ram, one of the big things for him tonight is the release of his movie. It's called Utah Stones of Strength. It was premiered, I think, on Tuesday evening. So, with that in mind, and without any further ado, I am going to invite Ryan in. Come on in, brother. Here we go, the suspense. The suspense. Ah! <laughs> Ryan! Hey, Ryan. how are you, Stevie? I'm very good, my friend. All the better for seeing you, chum. You keep well? Doing good, doing good. You? I, very well, thank you. Friday night, I've got beer. What kind of good company? What can I say? <laughs> it doesn't get. No, I, I, if it wasn't midday here, I'd be drinking one too. So oh, it's all man. good. It's five o'clock in the world somewhere. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Actually, it's eight o'clock here, so it is. So I'm three hours over G. <laughs> I, have. Oh, I thought it was eight o'clock your time. Is that what it is? Eight o'clock my time. I think we, we're. What are we about? Seven hours ahead of you, I think. Seven hours. Yeah, it's it's one o'clock here. I just got off from my morning clients at work. So. Oh, good okay, man, yourself. Ryan, that's yeah. not some CV, brother. It is. I'm sorry. That, that, that's some CV that you, you gave me about all the bits and pieces. I mean, I've, I've known, I know a fair bit about you, but not well, not half of the stuff that you were given through me. So tell me, the first thing I want to ask you is, what does full god drang mean? Uh, full god drang is the highest level for the Swedish stone. So it, it falls into three different categories. It's half half drang, hell drang and full god drang wow. and full god drang means you're a, a full farm hand capable of lifting stones that are well over right, right around 360 pounds oh wow good grief right okay yeah i wouldn't think there'd be too many who would reach that <laughs> so yeah not too many full farm hands uh many in the hell drang area in, in sweden but wow. yeah it's it's kind of just the swedish version of what the way they do it in iceland with the half stroker full stroker type stuff that's brilliant so was that all part of your, if you kind of rediscovering that your, your trip to sweden to discover the stones over there was that part of the the trip to find out no. about all that and do it yeah yeah, we knew about the the uh, half drang and hell drang. Um, it wasn't until we were actually there and reading some of the signs next to the stones themselves okay, yeah. where we found out about full god drang. Right, okay. I don't know too much about the Swedish stones. I mean, I, I, I'm assuming that it's a very rich culture over there, stone lifting. It is. Um, we found that there, it was extremely rich in stone culture in 
the reason being, it's funny because when you're there, you, you realize real quick why. Mm -hmm. And okay. there, it's a lot of forest, very flat land, a lot of, of farmland. But in order to make the farmland, they had to clear all the trees and that left a lot of stumps and stones. Okay. And yeah. in order to make that farmland, they had to eliminate those trees and carry those stones off with their bare hands. I mean, there was no machinery back in those days to do that. No Massey Ferguson tractors, eh? <laughs> That's right. No, no tractors. <laughs> no tractors at all. I mean, I mean, it, 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 all that, that sort of manual labor thing, you know, I, I know a lot of the Scottish sort of stories would be, you know, if you can lift that stone, you can get the job, you know, they would have lined up you know, when they were hiring for the farms and stuff. So I know a lot of the stone that probably came from that. So I would imagine that would have been similar around the world. Yeah, very, very similar. And yeah, just like in Iceland and in Scotland, if you were to lift the heavier stones, you were able to get more money on the farm and have a better job on the farm. But uh, yeah, and, you know, and that was probably about, I would say three quarters of the stones that we lifted were farm stones, but then there were stones outside of churches yes. that um, people were, were lifting. And look at it this way. It was in Sweden, the culture is the stronger the man, he got first dibs is what we call it in America yeah, yeah. as uh, far yeah, as the women. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Now that, that's, I wish they still had that. <laughs> they should, yes. they should keep that i think that's a good one i like that one absolutely <laughs> no i think we, we kind of jumped in at the, at the deep end there with a with the, with the full god drag i was just pretty curious to, to see what that was you know because i mean obviously be, there's a lot more that you've done to, uh, up to that point you know I mean, obviously with your highland games history that's eight years as a pro yeah. thrower that's, that's a long time yeah, eight years as a pro i threw uh 12 years total and then i i've coached uh, a lot of people after retirement from the Highland Games and uh, still enjoy the sport, still teach it regularly. Uh, but yeah, eight, eight years as a pro and uh, did fairly well and really enjoyed all of that. Yeah. Well, and the thing of it is, I mean, you're, you're still lifting, you're probably lifting as heavy or not heavier than you've ever done. You know, and some people after a career in Highland Games, you know, that takes its toll on you. You know, so it does. I was, I was very fortunate. I trained very, very, very smart, and uh, I didn't have any major injuries in my Highland Game career, which is kind of rare. That would be rare, yeah. And as far as the strength level goes, it's funny because <laughs> as I've gotten older, I've had to get smarter with my training as my recovery gets harder and harder to manage. Well, about it. Just the, <laughs> As you know, the, the smarter you train, I mean, you can do this for a really long time at a high level. Yeah. You just have to be smart about it. Yeah, I know. I think, I mean, they talk about old man strength, but I think it's old man wisdom as well. Kind of comes Absolutely. To, <laughs> it does, you know. I mean, I, I'm 60 in a couple of years, you know, so, I mean, it's for me, it's it, it's all about the recovery and listening to your body and, you know, and, and not, not not being a header, you know, like you can do, you can get away with stuff like that when you're young because you bounce better, you know, things heal yes. quicker, you know, but, I mean, when you get older, I find aches and pains, you know, that would have went away. They just don't go away as quick anymore, you know? Yeah, <laughs> and I mean, and I, I really feel that whether you're 25 years old or 55 years old, if you just concentrate on what you can recover from in the gym, you're going to be a healthy athlete. It's yeah. not about what you do in the gym. It's what you can recover from. And you've yeah. got to always keep that in mind. Yeah, I, I, I kind of discovered that pretty quickly on, you know what I mean? Because when I started training, I was training with Dad. You know, he, he was training me. You know, he was showing me all the things that I do. But it, and it, it wasn't a mistake that we made, but it was just – I think we, we, we realized it pretty quickly. You know, it's like I'm not in my 20s or 30s, and I, I can't do this three times a week like maybe Dad would have done when he was training, you know. So we kind of we kind of had to have a bit of a rethink pretty early on because I find myself just – still sore or still tired, you know, from the, particularly because we were going five, 600 pounds on a regular basis, you know, in the lifting. And it was like, you know what, <laughs> I just need, and then the more I did it, the, the better I got at it. So, I mean, you're, you're just in your 40s now, are you? You've only just turned 40 or 41, 42, something like that. Um, just turned 42 years old and uh, I still feel great. Um, my strength is still good. I, I just find it a little harder to recover. So I have to space out my heavy lifting just a little bit more than normal. But that's really all it's taken for me right now. Yeah, I can give you a bit of advice on that. Protein yes. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I said to my mate, we were talking recently about stuff, you know, we're talking about training, and so I don't really take protein shakes or vitamin supplements or anything like that. You know, just the reason that was a, was a conscious choice because I just wanted to do it the same way Dad did it, you know, back in, in his day. And Yes. Uh, I mean, one of the things that I found was with, with, with not taking all of that, you know, I mean, it's, I, I, well, I, I've nothing to compare it to because if I did, maybe I might have been stronger. I don't know, but I was strong enough to do what I wanted to do. But was, but yes. Because one of the things I did, I mean, obviously, you know, I, I played the drums in a bit with a band quite a bit. And you'd maybe be playing, go out for a couple of friends, you know, because you've got a weekend's gig. So, right, I'll get a night out with the friends on a Thursday, have a few beers. You get a gig on the Friday, it went well, you'll have a few beers after the gig. Saturday, maybe go well, have a few beers. Sunday, I'm going to relax now before work. So we'll go out for a beer. <laughs> And I go yeah, yeah. on Monday and pull a personal best. How, how does that work? <laughs> I could never get my yes. head on that. So that's what I said. Be- beer oh, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's such a powerful thing. So but, but was Stones yeah. always a big thing for you, or was it was it the Highland Games and then because of the Highland Games, the link to the Stones, or is it because Stones um, are more popular? I mean, was it always a thing? Well, yes. Yeah, so... I, I did some strongman stuff uh, in my early 20s. Right. And uh, when I was doing that, I really kind of had a knack for the Atlas Stones and did very well with those, was pretty strong with those, and, and always enjoyed that event way more than everything else. Um, right. I don't know if it's just because I was better at it or what, but that was definitely my main interest. And trained them regularly. But then, you know, when I got into the Highland Games, I kind of stopped – with uh, the, the strongman stuff because it was it's it doesn't work well with Highland Games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when you when you start doing Highland Games, you kind of have to stop all that strongman stuff, or you got to really focus to be a great Highland gamer. Yeah. If you don't, you will never be yeah. a great Highland gamer. Yeah. yeah. And uh, but yeah, the Stones came in uh, in I guess 2015 again in my life mm-hmm. when I went over to Scotland to throw and uh, just. I had a day off from throwing. I had just thrown, I believe, six games in a row. That's and I stopped by the Inverse Stone. Yeah. And did the Inverse Stone. And then 30 minutes later, went down to a Boyne where the games was going to be the next day. Yeah. And uh, had them take the Denny's off the flatbed trailer because they were still in storage at the time. Yeah. And I had the guy forklift them off the flatbed trailer and bring them down to the grass, and then I, I lifted them there at a Boeing in 2015. Yeah, that was the first thing I. That's the first time I came across you. I was looking through Gordon Denny's pictures, and I seen the picture of you on a Boeing green with the stones, you know. And then I've, I've kind of done a wee bit of poking about, managed to get a hold of you. But I, I kind of thought in my head that it was like three Henning games, so it was actually six in a row. Like yeah, <laughs> so I had done <laughs> Island of Mole, um, Island of Mole, Durness. St. Andrews, Hallkirk, um, I believe oh, there's one more after, Arisag. Uh-huh. I did all of those kind of right in a row. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, then then went over to June's place and then uh-huh. Aboyne and did the uh-huh. stones there. And that's what kind of gave me the bug was, was those yeah. doing those stones while I was there throwing. You definitely got your money's worth out of that trip. <laughs> so oh, man, I, and I was wrecked for uh, two, I, three months after. I can imagine, yeah, that's a lot to fit in in a short space of time, you know. I mean, I mean, you, you would have yeah. been, yeah, you just made it obviously very fit in your mid-30s and stuff, but still, that's that's a hell of a program you set yourself. But you know what, I mean, how often do you get the chance to travel and, and compete in Highland Games? And, you know, I mean, it's, I suppose it's, I mean, it's a, I, I get how much of a, a big upheaval it is for you guys to come from America to go to Scotland and stay for any length of time, you know, so you got to fit yeah. a lot in with work and stuff, you know. It's a hard trip, um, but it, it's well worth it. And any Highland gamer out there, I, I highly recommend it. If you can yeah. get out to Scotland, go to the motherland and throw, it's there's nothing that really beats it. And the fact that you get to do stones as a bonus is, well, is awesome. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the, the, the stones, are, there's so many new ones coming up now, you know. I mean, it, it, there, there, there's, there's Jamie and James and Martin, they're fighting new stones all the time, and Andy and stuff, you know, they're publicizing these things, and you're starting to see, just like yourself, that's what kind of caught me eye about you recently, you know, is, is how many new stones that you were that you were showing that people, I mean, we obviously, we, we, the, the Scottish ones, I wouldn't say everybody knows about, but anybody's interested in Scotland, your eye obviously is drawn to Scotland, you know, to see that, but now all of a sudden, yeah, I find my eye been drawn to Utah, and, you know, to all the places that you've gone, and Sweden, 
and even we, with full sticker that the, the documentary now, obviously with all of the triptychs, those and all the stuff now that's that's in, in Iceland, it's it's fabulous to see all that coming to the fore as well. Yeah, the stones have really exploded in the last few years, and it's great, and I love it. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's getting the credibility that it deserves. Yeah. And uh, it really yeah, yeah. is nice to see. Yeah. Well, one of the things that you just said there was about you know about the 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 stones around the churches. And I remember yes. speaking to, to Peter Martin with us, with just probably about three or four weeks before he passed, and we were talking about stones, and he said a lot of the stones in Scotland would have been in, grave, or in, in, in churchyards because after church, you know, the parents would have talked about grown-up stuff. So the kids would have went out, they were bored waiting for their parents, they would have found stones, and that's where a lot of that. That's why you find a lot of the stones in the graveyard cause, or in the, in, in the churchyards because they were just waiting for their yeah. parents to talk about grown-up stuff. <laughs> so they were... You know, yeah, you can see a lot of these things develop from that, you know. Yeah, and, and it's funny because the churchyard uh, there at Kungslena in Sweden, and uh, they would lift these stones like after a wedding. It would be the groomsmen trying to impress the bridesmaids. But specifically that stone, if you were able to lift it four times, uh-huh. you you had a right to ask for the farmer's daughter who owned the land in oh, wow. yeah, you know like out for a date i guess uh-huh. wow but, yeah so th- there was that and then there's another one uh, a little further away uh the Nora V stones and they're a testing stone where if you're able to lift the 385 pound stone to the plinth uh, you had reached manhood, and then you could ask for a woman's hand in marriage. Wow. So, yeah, it, it kind of bounces around, but, yeah, the, the ones outside the church is, yeah, it's kind of funny how, how they have developed. I think if I lived there, I'd still be single. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> no, you just you would have a very, very small woman, like my <laughs> wife. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny so imagine that Heather's five foot two. <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> Do you know that, that there's a story that I had forgotten about it and it was just when, when we were talking talking about your stuff earlier on that you'd done. And I had forgotten the story of it, but it all came flooding back to me when you mentioned the legs thing. Now pro- there's not probably not a huge amount of people know about the legs. I think if anybody's obviously interested in stone culture and has done any research you will have read about it, but I mean, a four hundred was it uh, four hundred eighty four pound stone? Yeah, I mean that that's that's a monster stone. But I mean that in itself, you know, is is, a, is an amazing feat. But I love the story, and the fact the story is is still alive, you know, because it, yeah. it hasn't. Do, do you want to tell the guys? Because I, I I love hearing it from people who've actually done it. You know, so that actually Legstein is pretty incredible. And my buddy that I travel with, uh, Nick Whalen. He's easily one of the best stone lifters in the world. And, uh, yeah, we actually hit that stone at about 11 o'clock at night. We had just oh, wow. uh, come out of the that part, the west side of the West Fjords. Mm-hmm. And uh, Haydollar is the, the name of the town that, that the Legstein sits in. Okay. And so we lifted Peter's stone earlier in the day, and we had worked our way over to Legstein. And, or, I mean, we were, we were just like little kids. We were so geeked when we came up on it. It's such an amazing location. And uh, so I actually did not want to lift it that night. I felt like my biceps were just going to blow right off. Um, I was incredibly taxed from doing all the stones out at Latra, mm-hmm. Brignol Stack, Husafel. Yeah. And uh, so Nick's <laughs> like, oh, let's do it. Let's do it tonight. And I'm like, oh, man, let's just wait till tomorrow. My arms feel like they're just going to rip right off the bone. Yeah. And so I, he talked me into eating dinner first and talking about it. And after quite a few beers and then more beers after. Protein shakes. We, that's all it took. That's all it took. <laughs> and, yeah, we drank some of those Viking Sturker beers over there and uh, then did it. Yeah, about 11, 1130 at night. And, yeah, it was a lot of yeah. fun. Was it still? Was it still daylight? I know that the Iceland can be very that the, the hours of daylight are. Yeah, it was even though it was eleven eleven thirty at night. It looked like it was noon. It was broad daylight. Wow! But yeah, walking in that Legstein around the farmer's grave. I mean, there's not a whole lot of people that have done it. You, you sign a book there inside the bed and breakfast after you've done it, 
And uh, I believe me and him were like number 45 and 46, if I remember right, of the people who had done it. Now, the, the last time, I'm not sure where it's out now, but I think the last time, or probably the, the first time I actually read about it, I, I, I was reading the story, and I think it mentioned 56. So that must have been obviously after you guys had done it then. There's been a few after you, you know, but 50, that, that's, that's, that's just over halfway there. Was, did you want to tell yeah. us a story about the, about the stone? What it, you know, it, yeah, so the, the legend is is that the, the farmer uh, that is buried under the big stone that's in the middle yeah. Uh, he had made a deal with the devil and lost. And uh, yeah, the, the devil had put him there and said, you know, your soul will release, be released to heaven as soon as a hundred people go circle your grave with yeah. the Legstein stone. So yeah, we're about halfway there. So, and I would imagine with the popularity of stone lifting now and, People going to Iceland regularly will get there a little faster, but it's still a massive stone, incredibly hard, and it, it's going to take some time regardless. Oh, so. <laughs> what do you reckon? It's about four foot high, thereabouts? About a four yeah, foot high, four, yeah, four foot high, uh, four foot high, 485, very smooth. It's got a nice taper to it, though. Yeah. Uh, and this, it actually sits in some pretty soft sand, so the footing is not wonderful for walking, but yeah. you can get the job done. Yeah, that, that's very cool. That is. And I think, I mean, the, the, the fact that one of the things I remember reading in the story is that when, when the devil charged, uh, challenged him to lift the stone, he had one of his demons hold on it so he couldn't lift it, so he tricked him. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, and you know what I mean. You're absolutely right about you know about the stones becoming more popular. I mean, one of the things when I lifted the Denny stones, I think I mean I wasn't counting at the time, obviously, but I'm looking back now of all the records and stuff. I think I was number forty eight or 40, 49, I think it was. You know, we're up to one hundred and fifty now. And I yeah, it's, it's amazing how many have done it now. You know, it is because it, it's really caught on. I think you know the likes of that full Stucker documentary will probably have given that more visibility. You know, where people will, will want to come over and try, because that's a hell of a challenge. You yeah. know, one thing about Iceland is in a whole other universe than Scotland. Scotland stones finish where Iceland begins. Wow. Iceland is, is so incredibly heavy, and the stones are so far apart that you have to drive to that it, it puts a whole different aspect on it. And Whereas I feel I could have lifted Scottish stones all day long and just really it's not too big of an issue. The Icelandic stones, I mean, you're looking at they start right around 350 pounds and most of them are in the upper 300s to low 400s. And then you got Grinnell stack, which is 617. Yeah. And then Legstein at 485. Ah. So, yeah, it, it's it's so taxing on the body. Mm -hmm. uh, and like I said, the distance between stones is mm -hmm. so, so big. You're doing so much driving that takes a lot out of you. Yeah. Um, uh, Iceland is incredibly hard. It is an incredibly hard place to lift. Yeah. And yeah, there, yeah. it is. People really underestimate those Icelandic stones. They're incredibly hard. Yeah. I, I know. I know. Is, is it the drifting stones are small that go up to the big ones? Is that where the full starter story comes from? Uh, so really full Sturker is going around the goat pin. Um, as far as the stones being full strong, it's like 354 pounds or something to lift the full Sturker stone at Dritvik. So I actually did not do Dritvik. Um, I had to make the choice to either go there and, and miss the stones in the West Fjords or right. skip Dritvik and go to the West Fjords. And for okay. me, it was a no-brainer. The West yeah. Fjords are by far more important than Dritvik. Oh, okay, right. I, I wasn't aware of that. I suppose, I mean, so that means really that there's a couple of ways when you go over there. There's, a, there's more than one way to become to hit, hit full starter. Yeah, um, yes and no. I, I mean, truly full starter, there's only one way, and that's going around the goat pin. Right, okay. Um, right. Yeah, that's really the only way to be, quote, full Sturker. Yeah. Gotcha. But there are full Sturker stones. I, I think that's a big misconception. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and I, know, I know Nick feels the same way from whatever we've translated and what we've read is uh -huh. full Sturker truly means circling the goat pin, not necessarily lifting a full Sturker stone. Yeah. See, when, when you're, you're talking about the, the stories, these and how, how the, 
you know, the, the stories can get a wee bit distorted and, you know, through translation, through nobody's fault. It's just that's the way it is when stuff is transferred yeah. out of the mouth, you know. Talking to James Graham uh, last week and we were talking about, you know, obviously James is playing a big part in writing these stories down, you know, carrying on Peter Martin's work. Are you doing anything? Are you planning to do anything with the Swedish one or have you already done it? Uh, so there, there are more stones in Sweden. Um, we've done a lot of research mm -hmm. and we, we found many, many more. I, there was just, we lifted 20 and wow. we were absolutely blasted. We couldn't lift any more at the end of that trip because they're all, they start at like 300 in there for the most part That's and then go up to right around 388. Uh-huh. Um, then oh. with Sigurd Stone being 438 pounds, if I remember right. Oh. And, uh, but there are more, there are more in central Sweden, northern Sweden, um, yeah. that we have found, but it, it would require a whole nother trip. What about the stories, writing the stories down? Are, are, are they in print already, Ryan? Or just, I mean, is, is that something that somebody has done, or is it something that still needs to be done? Um, so we found the history and the stories through all the translations, which is really the hardest part of what we do. Mm -hmm. Finding the stones is hard. Translating to get the history is way harder. Yeah. Uh, really going and lifting them is the easy part. Mm -hmm. um, but I got to say, going and finding them and finding the history is what me and Nick enjoy the most. Uh -huh. Lifting them is just the icing, icing on oh, yeah. the cake. Oh yeah, absolutely. I kind of, I can see that. I mean, I mean, from, from myself. I mean, I, I, I mean, this close now uh, to actually physically put my hands on some stones in Ireland here. You know, since it's good. Yeah, since talking to Peter, he had some leads. He had started some work, but there was stuff that he was doing in Scotland. He wanted to finish off, and then obviously very he passed away in 2015. So I've been speaking to James Graham, and we've been kind of, I've been poking out the notes that Peter sent me. And of the notes that he gave James, and we're putting them together. And I've literally just at the start of this, I just there was a wee notification come in there. There's a chap uh, who moved from here, from Ireland, out to Scotland, and he lived very close to Peter Martin. And he was telling Peter about some stones over in Ireland with rings in them. And he told him it was at a place called the Wayside Inn in a, in a town called Doak. Now, I grew up four miles from there. And when I was a kid, oh. I would have snuck into the bar and had a couple of, you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but so I mean, obviously, when I was going to the place, I mean, I knew it really well, but I didn't, I wasn't aware of the story about the stones. So, the first thing I did was a call to see them, and I couldn't really get much. The family that owned it had moved away, but I have, I have an avenue to contact them. But I, I Peter didn't give me any names of his friend from here. So, because obviously, if I spoke to him, he could give me a bit more. Now, one of the things that I have kind of thought is, you know, because they're talking about ring stones in that area. I mean, my dad, obviously, we, living with dad we only lived four miles from it so his ring stones might have been the ring stones that he was talking about <clears throat> but he was saying that they were actually outside the pub so again it could be one of those you know where a story is starts off and then somebody passes it and somebody had a couple of whiskeys and then it comes down like those stones are at the pub or there's a guy who lives four miles from the pub who has those stones you know so I, I, but I, I literally just got that so that that's that's my job for tomorrow i'll contact that lady and see if I can get in touch with this guy and get a wee bit more information because that's exciting stuff for me. That's, that's absolutely, yeah. And, and yeah, as you know, I mean, hunting it down, talking to that guy, getting it all figured out, putting the puzzle together really is the most exciting part and it's the most fulfilling by yeah, far. It is, it's crazy. But one of the things that I did get from that, that story was it's as far as I got with it, that somebody said, I think there might have been an anvil. And I think the story was you know, where you have the bar that flips up, you have to get behind the bar. That the, the farmers would have put it on the thing so that the barman couldn't get out to go home at night. So it was like, pour us another drink and we'll lift it off and let you go home. <laughs> so that yeah, was yeah. one of the stories that we heard, you know. So then the thing was, if anybody could lift the anvil up onto the bar, they would get a free drink. You know, it was probably like a 300 pound anvil. So it would be, be a tough lift for anybody, you know. Particularly if you had a yeah, drink, yeah. your biceps aren't warmed up, you know, and you're trying to, you know. So I mean, it's tough, but all those stories are great, but I, I would love to. To, to see one through to the end where I've actually found it. And there are islands, there's three islands off the coast, the west coast of Ireland. They're called uh, the Aran Islands. Uh, they're, they're just, 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 you actually go into a town called Galway and then you get the ferry out from Galway across. And I actually got speaking to one of the residents that was a friend of a friend who works down there 
and her friend down there, her father lives on the island, so spoke to him. He put us in touch with this guy, so it was a bit of a, a long journey to get to him, but we got to him, and I spoke to him on the phone, and he was saying, yeah, we have smaller ones at the schools for the children, and we have the bigger ones. And the challenge for those guys, because it changes, you know, the challenge for the Inverstone is a wall at waist height. You know, one of the challenges in Ireland was to actually throw a stone over your shoulder off the back. The challenge in this and this on the Iron Islands is to lift the stone as high as you can. So whoever lifts the stone the highest, should that be the waist height, shoulder, press, you know, on the night would be the champion of the night. Or, But it might have been, like you say, back in the days when they were looking for farm hands, who can lift the stone the highest will get the choice of the better jobs and possibly yes. the other women. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so, so there's quite a few of those stories that I'm kind of, I'm, I'm just, you get a wee bit, maybe every two three weeks you get an, another wee lead where one closes for you but another one opens up. So I think well, once I get, if I can uncover any of these, I'm going to try and do what James has done and write them down, you know, take photographs and I'll bring guys with me, you know, and we can have a go at lifting them and get some photographs. As long as the guys are cool with us doing that, I don't want to, you know, if it's a private thing on the island and they don't want to share it with the outside world, well, then we'll just we'll do it privately, even for them, you know, to write it down and send the stuff back to them. But fingers crossed we can get some Irish stones into the mix. You know, I would love, I mean, if, if they do anything in this and leave anything behind, it would be, you know, to get the Irish stones out, there would be a nice thing to, to kind of to leave behind me, you know. It's been uh, it's been many years since I've looked into the Irish stones. I actually did a little bit of work. I want to say it was about three maybe four years ago right and i did find some information i'll have to go back and look i, I keep all my stuff but huh. um I'll, I'll take a look and i'll see if there's anything i can send you if it's anything that you haven't found or haven't Watch seen but absolutely yeah but most definitely because I, I do remember there was one down by a boat dock that seemed to be pretty good size there in ireland i can't remember the town it's like i said it's been quite a few that's, years that's but okay, yeah. i'll look into it and see what i can find and maybe send it to you well, that'd be cool because I mean, with all this being the weather's picking up here now you know we're starting to lift up out of lockdown so you know, it'd be nice to get on my motorcycle and just sort of start turning around, you know, because it's very easy to take a day, just go to these places. Ireland's that small. You know, there's very yeah. few places you can't reach in a day and, and get home the same day, you know. So even that, so it would be nice to have those leads, you know, and then I could just, just drive down, ask a few questions, kick a few doors down. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. That would it be nice to me. That, I, I don't know if, if, if you're considering it, because, I mean, it's just, just on the point of writing the stuff down. I mean, did did you when when you were doing your translations? Did you write your translations down, or did you just put them in your head? Or so I do it all on my phone, and uh, because I do it all on my phone, I screenshot everything. Right, and because I'm just I'm so afraid to lose any of the information because some of it I, I, there's been a few times when I first started where I I couldn't go back and find it. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I have well, me and Nick were laughing the other night because we have between like 75 to 90 open windows on our phone at all times. Wow, and <laughs> and it's just sometimes you have to take a break and then go huh. back, and uh, so the constant digging the thousands and thousands of hours that we put in. Yeah. yeah sometimes you got to have a break. So you leave those windows open then you start kind of catching on to other stones, but anytime with translations and anytime where you think you really might be on something, I just screenshot everything. So I have something like 1500 screenshots on my phone. Wow, that's a lot. And yeah, it's an extreme amount, but it's what I do for fun. So mm -hmm. I, I'm weird. So I don't know another way to ex explain. <laughs> I don't think it's weird at all. I mean, I, I suppose because I like doing that as well. I know plenty of guys who are, you know, I, I totally get that. But I mean, think obviously of all our people would think, what the hell are you doing running around taking photographs of screenshots of stones for? You know? <laughs> Some people think we're mad, but, you know, I think un until you get bitten by that bug, you know, of, of the history and uh, even putting your hands on a stone, that the feeling that that gives you sometimes, it's... You know, I think until you've experienced that, I mean, even my dad experienced it with the Denny's. I've experienced it now with the Denny's and some other stones that I've been fortunate enough to, to put my hands on and, and then now hopefully trying to uncover stones. You know, it's exciting. I, I get a real kick out of it, you know. I really do. Absolutely. I, even though yeah, most, I, most I don't people will never as, understand, and that's okay. Yeah, that's exactly it. I don't lift as much as I did, and I certainly I think my heaviest lifts are behind me, but. Yeah, you know, I still want to do it. I still want to be stay strong enough that there is a stone. Say it's a hundred kilogram stone and off the coast. Oh of yeah, yeah, I want to go down and lift it. You know, I definitely do. 
Uh, but big thing, big news for you this week. Your your film, your your movie. You yeah, the um, uh, Cameron Mayer uh, goes by Bear Cam on uh, Instagram. Uh, he met up with me starting uh, almost a year ago, uh-huh. and we started filming for the Utah Stones of Strength. And, it, you know, it's kind of evolved and turned into even much, much more. Uh-huh. And uh, they, did the, uh, they did the premiere on Tuesday night, and a lot of people showed up. It was very good. Everybody really enjoyed it. And uh, it sounds like it'll be pumped into the independent film festivals worldwide. Okay. And uh, so where it ends up being, who ends up getting it and mm-hmm. making it even bigger, we don't know yeah. yet. Okay. But um, it, it'll be interesting to see the the response from the independent film festivals. Yeah, that'll be cool as if we get that out, you know, because I mean, I, I know that whenever Stoneland came out, it was a short documentary, 45 minutes. Uh, the last time I counted, it was 16 million. I think I heard recently it's hit 21 million. You know, that's that's a lot of people it's to see. It's amazing. Yeah, it is. So, I mean, hopefully you and your viewers will get out to the same sort of audience because, I mean, there is an audience for that now, clearly. There, you know? yeah. yeah. And I, I think Stoneland really laid the groundwork for everything that we do now and really gave people that view into what we do that they would have never had before. And full Sturker is same thing. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, yeah, so it's nice to be able to tell people what I do and say, Hey, you know, have you seen stone land? Have you seen full Sturker? And, and most people have. And so then they can kind of relate and understand our, our weird world that we live in Stevie. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, it's, it's a strange world. All right. So it's Utah stones of strength. So what's, what's, what's the message as, as Keith Lemon says over here, what's the message? <laughs> Well, so what I did is I tried to replicate uh, many of the the historic stones worldwide that I've lifted okay. and try to get as close as I can to, again, mm-hmm. kind of replicating but making it different at the same time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we have like a heavier version of the saddle and mare. Um, okay. We have a heavier version of the inverse stone. We have one that looks very much like the Fiona. Okay. And – giving people a chance to do this here close to home. And uh, that is to me is very important because stone tours are very expensive. It's hard to get to these countries and and hell this last year, you couldn't get to another country. So being able to do that here and not be able to have to, these people not having to spend the money to go international and still get that practice in, yeah. Any history has to start somewhere. So right now we're, I think we're at somewhere around 240 lifts uh, completed, like wow. uh, good lifts. Just in a year? And I, yeah. yeah, it's a lot of them. And I track them all and I put them all on Facebook and to, into our Utah Stones of Strength page. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, it's done very, very well and just continues to build steam. And uh, I think that, I think the documentary will just, keep that going in the right direction. That's awesome. I mean, I just, it's what you just said. There's absolutely, absolutely true. I mean, history has to start somewhere. It really does. Yes. I mean, at a hundred years time, you know, when we look back at, at, at what you're doing, I mean, there's Brett Nichols stones with the walk of stones. You know, we, had the, we did a wee design for them and it said uh, the Nickel stones history in the making, but it's, that's, that's, that's what we're doing now between us, you know, with all these like new things that are, that are coming to the fore and we're getting them out and, and documentaries or websites People are writing books about it, you know. This is this is it's, it's like a whole new wave, you know. It's it's almost like, you know, the, the, like the equivalent of punk in nineteen seventy seven. It's a new wave of music. This is a new wave of of stone lift and a new wave of strength, you know. And it's and it's starting to be caught on, you know, by the likes of you know Giants Live or to have taken on the the, the Walking Stones. So that's you're going from like Strongman to the Atlas Stones now, actually going back to the Natural Stones, you know. And I I, I love seeing that, you know. The, to have that at the elite level of strongman on on the planet, you know that's that's something, you know. I'm- yeah, and I totally agree. It's all good for what we do for the most part. The the only thing I don't like, call me a purist. I hate when they use tacky at those things. It drives me absolutely crazy. Yeah. Um, 
I, when I yeah. see them walk that Husafel replica and they tack you up before, I just want to throw my phone at the wall. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I, I totally get that. I, I get where you're coming from because I feel the same myself about, and particularly about natural stones. I mean, certainly as far as my Donald Denny games goes, you know, there's there's no way I will ever. It's not a lie. That's not the right word, but I, I would never encourage it because what we're trying to do is we're trying to recreate sort of ancient sort of challenges here. You know, but I, I get it. I mean, with with, with, with with these things, guys are trying to push the, the bar as far as humanly possible to do. So it's like when they have the, the, the axle, they put straps on. You know, that's every at least everybody's doing it, you know. So I, I can see both sides of it, but I mean, my preference is just you and the stone. That's my preference. Yeah. Well, well, let's put it this way. If my 42-year-old weak ass can lift the, the Husafel stone and walk the pen yeah. without tacky, yeah, the strongest men in the world can do it also. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I do. I mean, I, I like to play devil's advocate in these things and try and you know show both sides of the story because obviously I have my own opinions on it. And I, I think it, it's no secret how I feel about that. But you know, I, I kind of get what the guys are doing too. You know, but you know, like for example, they've got two days of competition, so they can't blow their ass out in one in, in one event. But at the same time, when you when you look at the pure thing of it and you do it without any 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 support or any any artificial aids you know you walk away you think that was me that was just that was yeah. me that, you know absolutely and I, I i get that but then there's a there's a human endurance how far can you push that with with all of the years and but as long as everybody's doing it you know and, and nobody's trying to do it natural and somebody else is coming in you know they're getting all of this this extra help you know i think there needs to be a level playing field across these things yeah. you know there is. Yeah. Just, 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 just while I have you, uh, the next time you do come over, let me know because I would love to have you compete in the Donald Denny Games. Oh, oh absolutely. It, um, I would, boy, if it was up to me, if I had the money, I'd be there every single year. And yeah. w one year, my I've already told my kids that their their graduation present when they graduate high school will will take the family over to Scotland. And I'd really like to make it during that weekend so they could yeah. come enjoy the the entire experience of Donald Denny Day in the gathering. And it, it really is something special that that every stone lifter should be able to experience because yeah. Stevie, you do an amazing job, and there's really nothing else like it on earth. And That's a hell yeah, of a thing, you yeah. really have made something special. Yeah, do you know what? I mean, it, it was one of those things. Thank you, Flop. It was one of those things that it actually didn't require a huge amount of thinking. It was almost like, why is this not already a thing? You know, and when it was when, when when Brett and I were talking about bringing the games in, you know, it was like, it has to be natural stones. You know, and then we looked around and we, we couldn't see anything that's just all natural stones. I think there's something in Australia, possibly, that, that that's all natural stones now. That, uh, you know, but I mean, it's if there's one or two more. I mean, I don't want to be the first or anything, like that, but I just I just want us to have that that pure thing, you know. And obviously, when you have the Denny's linked in with it, and one of the things that we have this year, uh, hopefully it can go ahead. But we have they have the Inverstone there every year, as you know. Uh, this year, I've actually managed to track down the McGlashan stones. So you know the history, obviously. So, so did you uh, did you get them from uh, uh, Dougie Edmonds's place? No, it's it's, it's another chap has them now. I, I can't remember his name. Oh God, I've had a mental blank. It's just because I know the the other ones went to the Sorenex complex in South Carolina. I think they yeah. shipped them over. There were some there. Yes, the, 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 these are the original. Were the original five, but there's only four of them left. One of them got broken. So there's four, gotcha. of the original, there's four of the original five. So it actually, obviously, with the, the progression from the Inverstone to the McGlashan stones to the modern Atlas stones that everybody lifts now, you know, to have yeah. the, the complete history of this modern challenge in one place with the Inver and the McGlashans in the one place, I, I can't wait. I'm really excited about that. You know, yeah, that'll be great. Yeah. I, I, I think that's really a good way to, to move it forward and, and make it even better. I, I yeah. totally agree. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So fingers crossed this, this, this year we can go ahead. I mean, it's, it's touch and go at the minute. You know, we don't know how things are. Things are moving in the right direction. Every couple of weeks, something opens up, something's better. There's more people allowed in a field. There's more people allowed to compete in sports, you know. So four months down the line, hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, we, we, we'll, we'll yeah. get a good games on this year, you know. But if we don't, Definitely, it's 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 not going to go away. 
<laughs> yeah. well, as long as I draw a breath, it's definitely not going to go away. Well, it's not yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and I mean, the fact that it's you running it, Brett Nichols, who I have a tremendous amount of respect for. He, he's a, a great guy, and uh, everything he does for historic stone lifting is awesome. Yeah. Um, he puts a lot I mean, of that. Yeah, I mean, you got Jim Splain in that area. I mean, what a great guy he is. So th there's so many awesome people. James Graham, I, I can't even – he, to me, is the godfather, and I know he learned everything from Peter Martin, but – Don't we tell yeah. him that? He's a big head. <laughs> What's that? Don't we tell him that? He'll give him a big head. <laughs> oh, man, I, I, I respect the hell out of James Graham, and he is one of my favorite people, and I, I absolutely love talking to him and – yeah, I think anytime you can get him involved in anything, as much as he doesn't like to, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, he he really is a, a special person in historic stone lifting. There's nobody like him, and yeah, yeah, uh, having those guys help you out really That's is great. Is awesome. I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, it's, it's James. There, I mean, he's a quiet fellow. I and mean, when I when I said to him about coming on, and we we had a chat last week about stuff, you know. And, you know, it's, my dad said, James, is a sort of a quiet thought. Do you think it'll be much of a, you know, it will, it will be a hard conversation? And I said, you know what, doesn't matter how quiet you are. Once you start somebody talking about stones, you know, their eyes light up and you just start the motor and stand back. And that's what happened last week. James was just, you know, he was in it. You could tell, you could see that he was really, you know, sort of just by the whole thing, you know, and really fired up by what's going on, you know. I mean, and you're absolutely right, Ryan. I mean, with with the gathering, I mean, yes, I mean, I, I maybe was the spark, but I mean, with that's that's not just me. That's definitely not on me. It's you know, Brett, you know, Jim Splain. I mean, without Jim and Rosemary coming, you know, I mean, we can share that with the whole world now because they're recording everything for us. You know, my website's the same. Every lift, I mean, Jim and Rosemary record it. I stick it on the web. But all I have to do is just copy a file and you know, stick it up on the website. That's easy. You know, because they they yeah. up every Saturday. With all these lifters, Brett's there showing them. You know, Brett would probably do about eight or nine lifts. Just to know if you do it this way, it comes up, or if you do it this way. So he's about nine lifts of the Denny's before the poor people even get their hands on them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To yeah. I, I got to tell you, so anytime somebody brings up your dad, um, they'll like, hey, you ever heard of this Jack Shanks guy? You know, he used to lift the Denny Stone and this and that. Or they'll, they'll see like a picture on like History of Strength Sport or something. Uh -huh. And they'll, they'll, they'll message me or they'll tag me in it or this and that. And I always kind of laugh. And I always send them a screenshot of your dad giving me a big hug after I, I lifted the Denny's there at the gathering. And they always laugh. They're like, oh, my God, you're hugging that guy. I'm like, yeah, he's a really nice guy. <laughs> yeah, you know, I got the shock of my life when we got involved in all this. And we obviously started making friends in, in, in the USA and, you're around the world about stone lifting that they all knew about my dad. I mean, we couldn't believe that, you know, about yeah. how much. Because, I mean, whenever dad did it, I mean, there was no social media. You know, you had the local newspapers, you had TV, that was it. You know, and, and then the odd book would have sort of come across or you'd seen the odd article in a magazine. But we, we didn't realise then Bill Crawford contacted dad and he did that article on Milo. And I think the Milo thing then, that, that got it out, you know, amongst the sort of strength community. But, I mean, it, it's yeah. lovely. For me, it's just such an honour to see my dad recognized in that way you know because my, my, my dad's yeah. a very humble man as you know but i mean it's just it's just wonderful to see that out there and, and the respect that people have for him you know particularly now i mean he's 85 now and he comes along to the gathering and people are over you know and they shake hands oh let's size your hands <laughs> yeah oh yeah. yeah yeah your dad is an amazing guy and yeah i'm happy to know him and happy to have given him a big old hug so yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, I can't wait to get because we have not. I'm not allowed to hug him at the minute because of all this nonsense, you know. So I'm looking forward yeah. to a big old hug myself pretty soon. Yeah. Well, good. Good. So what about you? Richard? Just to, we didn't really sort of finish off on your on your on your your movie thing. So what's what's the next stage for you in that? Is it is there a promotion tour coming or? Um, you know, I'm not real sure how the steps work here. Um. Uh, I I would love that uh, mm -hmm. with the way that the world is today. I don't know that that's possible. Uh, I just, just um, yeah. yeah. So really, yeah, I'm just kind of just going to wait and see what happens as it goes through the, the film festivals and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we did some more filming this last weekend down in Southern Utah uh, with a couple more of the Utah stones of strength. 
Um, I, I think there's a couple different directions that it could go. Uh, Cameron, the director, the filmmaker, he, uh, I, I would like for him to come with me on the next Stone Tour. I, I can't really tell you too much. Okay, no, that's but, um, I love secrets. <laughs> yeah, I, I found some pretty significant historic stones that will blow everybody's minds and i'd really like for him to come on that journey okay. it's a little bit of a dangerous one but and i really i just need the borders to open and then i can go get that done and start that process also. So I, I really feel that's the next step is letting the Utah Stones of Strength documentary do its thing yep. and then start working on what I consider the biggest of them all w with the new stones that I've found. Uh, the new stones did you find in, in, in America? Uh, I can't tell oh, you where. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it, it just, all I can tell you is it's really hard to get to. Okay. It's extremely dangerous. Okay. And, yeah, it will be one of the more significant finds worldwide ever for the historic stones. I promise not to ask you anymore about it. <laughs> it's okay. You're, you can you're just allowed to ask. I don't have to answer. That's all. <laughs> yes, you can play the fifth. There you can. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned earlier on about having done 240 lifts is is that i mean is that 240 lifts of of like half a dozen stones or is it you know it, it, how many so stones would that represent across the i think i think it's 18 stones total That's and that 240 lifts are all completed lifts Okay. And there's no doubles. No, it's okay. not. I don't count anybody lifting the same stone over and over, or multiple stones over and over and over again. So those are all individual lifts. Okay. Of those eighteen stones. Yes. And is that all in Utah? Is that all in the, in the state of Utah? All in the state of Utah. Yeah. All the Utah stones of strength are inside of our borders. Okay. Wow. Well, that that's a lot. You know, for for. We'll yeah. be, what, in a relatively small area of, of America, you know, we see the size of America. This to have eighteen in one state—that's that's a lot. If you imagine, yeah, me I, I mean, as far as the size of Utah, I mean, I know it's bigger than Ireland, but oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. I, I would say if I had to drive from the northern border of Utah to the southern border of Utah. It would probably be somewhere around maybe seven hours. Okay. Whoa. Yeah, that's like, okay. I think. Yeah. Yeah, and I think from east to west, it would probably have to be somewhere around there also. Yeah. I remember doing some shows in Atlantic City, and there were people came down from New York to see us. Uh, they said they'd driven seven hours to get there. So that's what a big. Yeah, that that's 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 a fur area. Yeah, that that is bigger than Ireland. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, yeah. that's all freeway miles, too, driving 80 mm -hmm. miles per hour uh, on a, just a wide-open freeway. It, it would take about seven hours, I believe, from the very northernmost to the southernmost. Uh -huh. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that, that, that's, that's, a, that's a lot of ground to cover. But yeah. even, even so, to uncover it, and the thing about it is, I mean, we talk about, you know, historic stones, you know, and, and people say, well, America is a relatively new, new country. But, I mean, you like the, the, the Denny's. I mean, the, the, the Denny legend only goes back to 1860. So that's just about a, just over 150 years. You know, that's yeah. post America. You know, I mean, the, even the Everstone would be a relatively yeah. new stone in, in proper historic terms, you know. So the, the history that you guys have with those stones is of a similar level to me, you know, of, of the 100 to 150, 200 years sort of thing. That, that that's, that's proper historic stone. Nothing to me anyway. Yeah, absolutely. And if I remember right, uh, the ones that we lifted in southern Sweden, uh, most of those were from right around the early 1700s. There were a few that I think there was one that was from the 1500s, mid mid 1500s. But yeah, it, it really and, and like Iceland, Iceland's hard to tell as far as how old the stones are, yeah. uh, how long they've been lifted. But it's it's definitely a couple hundred years. Mm -hmm. And a couple of hundred years is, you know, that that's 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 definitely historic stone territory, you know. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, when we're talking about history having to start somewhere, I mean, my dad stones, he built those. Uh, we actually, it was one day we were moving, I was, we we're trying to get the backyard cleaned with the sit, so we we're getting them up onto a pallet, and I turned one of them on its side, and on the bottom he'd etched the date, February 1972, in the bottom, the height on that I don't know, it was made out of concrete, so, but it was February 1972, so that's, that's like, next February, that's 50 year old. You know, my dad's well, 50 years old. I mean, really, uh, I, I really feel that with your dad's stones and the significance of what your father's done and what you've done, when you 50, 60, 70 years from now, those things should really be outside of a museum or something and taken care of very, very much the way that the, the Denny's are. Uh, so I really hope that's what happens yeah. with your father's stones because I do feel that they are tremendously significant. Well, if I have anything to do it, they will be. I mean, I obviously make sure that they're well looked after. You know, no matter what happens, you know, I mean, those are those are two. I tell you what, I mean, if you ever if you do make it to Ireland, you need to come try them. You know, they're they're, they're slightly heavier than the Denny's, not a huge amount, but they are a much much harder lift. You might. Oh, I'm, I'm in, man. If I'm ever in Ireland, I am there for sure. Yeah. We've got Brett Nickel coming over this year and Mark Haydock coming over to, to have a have a crack at them. You know, we had big Luke oh, Reynolds. You know, Andy Kearney. Yeah. Mark is Mark is the king of all things Denny in my world. Oh, Mark yeah. is an unbelievable lifter. Yeah, yeah we were talking one of the, one of the first things I did in this series of things was my, uh, Mighty Mark and the Magic Minute. <laughs> 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 so I mean, it's it's it, it's I think it's I genuinely think it's on. You know, I mean, forty six point three is where he's at at the minute. You know, I think he feels, and that's the important thing, is he thinks it's on. You know, and, and you know yourself, I mean, if you don't think it's on, it's not going to happen. You know, and, and I think, yeah. I mean, I, I mean that, that's what impresses me, because so, you're not the biggest guy in the world. I mean, you're not, you're not, you know, you're, you're not, you're not 400 pounds, you know what I mean? No. But yet you're going to lift in nearly a 500 pound stone and walking around in a circle with it. It's not even lift and set down, it's lift and walk around a circle. That's, you know, so obviously in your head, you know, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's not, not bad for a old drug-free guy, is it? That's no bad for an old drug-free <laughs> guy. I would put myself in that category too. <laughs> Damn right. Damn yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, funny stuff. Right. I mean, that's an, I have loved chatting to you, pal. I have, is, is there anything else that you want to put out there about, about your movie? I mean, because I mean, I'm, I'm sure people, you know, to listen to this now will want to see this. You know, so I mean, is there anything you want to uh, about the next steps where we might get to see it? Because I, I, I definitely want to see it. I, I would say just um, as far as keeping everybody up to date in, as to when they'll be able to see it and how they'll be able to see it. Uh, if they just want to follow me on Instagram, and mm -hmm. I mean, the the second that it is available, I will post the link immediately so that everybody can see it. That's and fun. I'm extremely excited about it, and especially with with the great response at the premiere, wow. everybody really loved it and thinks it's something special. And I, I definitely do too. And the second it's available, I, I will definitely let everybody know. Yeah. Well, I'll have my pizza ordered and my beer all in the fridge. You know, I'll have <laughs> close the doors, turn the phone off. You know, how how long does the movie last for? Uh, it's I believe a minute. I'm sorry, a minute, hour and nine minutes. Oh, that's cool. Okay, yeah, that's that's great. Yeah, that's about right. You know, I think I mean you, you can get into it. If it gets into a couple of hours and stuff, you know, you might lose people's attention. But in hours, that's perfect. You know, it is. You know, I mean, the the, the stone lamb was about forty five minutes. That's three in. But I always thought yeah, it's a bit it's, longer. You know, everybody tells me when they were watching it that uh, you know they're holding their breath through every stone lift and wiggling in their seats and <laughs> squirming around. So it, it definitely keeps your attention. That's great. I, I can't wait to see it, man. Congratulations on getting it out. You know, that's that's fantastic. And listen, I mean, I, I, you were very nice to me. I have to say, I feel the same about you. What you're doing for stone lifting, you know, with with everything that you post, with all the stories you put out there, with how far you travel. You know, yeah. I, mean, I know I, I, I spoke, Eric, Eric Fiorello, when he was alive, him and I spoke one night about you, you know, and about your full Sturger adventure and stuff, you know, and you know, he, he had so much respect for you. So he had him and what you're doing, you know, so it's, it's, and it's, it's well earned. The respect you have is well earned, I think. Thank uh, you, sir. I, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it coming from you. It, it really means a lot. And really, Stevie, if it wasn't for what you guys did with Stoneland, paving the way, 
you know, who knows if, if what we've done here really would have ever happened. So yeah, there's no way we could have done this without you guys. So I, I really appreciate it. It's a great brotherhood. We're all playing our part. I think that's the key thing in it. And, and you know what I love about it too, and I say this every week, is we all support each other. You know, it's there's there's no... You know, there's no trying to outdo you. Everybody, everybody's no matter. Even if it's a competition, I noticed in the Donald Denny games, you know, where you yeah. had a great rivalry with, I mean, with the, the guys that were there, but they were all, you know, and the and, and the, the uh, Nicholstone walk, they were all, come on, come on, you know, and when they were doing the throwing and stuff, everybody was behind everybody. And, the, you know, it's, it's, but it's, it's a marvellous brotherhood to be part of, you know. And yeah, that that is probably one of the greatest parts about what we do as uh, historic natural stone lifters is, we really do lift each other up and support each other because, you know, there's not a tremendous amount of us that are crazy enough to do this. So we yeah. really have a lot of respect for the other guys because yeah. it is it is a something it's a special. It is a family. It is. I mean, there's no question about it. It's it's a family and it's and it's a growing family, you know. But it's a cool family to be part of, you know. Yeah. And one of the things I like about it is a family that doesn't really fight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> don't, don't, you know. I, I don't know what kind of family you're in, but yeah, not yeah. mine. My mine fights regularly. <laughs> oh, I like, can imagine me picking a fight with my dad. That would that would end badly for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I always said, but by the time most guys have their father into their sort of sixties and seventies, they can take their dad. You know, my dad's eighty-five. I still can't take him. <laughs> <laughs> not a chance. That, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. I'm okay with that. I'm I, I'm cool with that. I'm very cool with that. Yeah. You know, but I mean, when we talk about this, I mean, you, you know, you, you, you think you think you've been talking to somebody for five minutes, and then next thing you know, like two hours have passed. I mean, that's that's an hour we've been on this now, or an hour. You know what it is? Yeah, it, it does. It just flies by, and I could talk about this stuff all day long. I, I absolutely love it, and it does. It just flies by. It does fly by, Ron. It does, brother. It has been an absolute pleasure chatting to you. Thank and you, sir. I can't wait to, I can't wait to get you over to Donald Denny Games. Hopefully, uh, like I said, hopefully within the next couple of years, I'll be able to take the whole family over and, and give them the entire experience also. Yeah. Oh, hopefully my old body will be able to hold up and still be able to lift them at that time so I don't embarrass myself in front of my family. I'm glad <laughs> like you as well. My old 58-year-old body's doing all right at the minute, so you know, there's, there's hope for you yet. <laughs> that, that's right. That's right. You're going to be my role model. Absolutely. Yes, a small role model. <laughs> well, <laughs> you take care of yourself and send my love to the family. And Thank you, Steve. You I really appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me on. Best of luck with the with the movie. Wish you the best. Cheers, brother. Mm, bye. Bye.